Welcome to Living Life. May God bless you with His strength and health in your life. One of the most difficult transitions for leaders to make is the shift from doing to leading. Since you are a new boss, you can get away with holding on to work and your peers and other leaders may even admire how ready you are to keep rolling up your sleeves to execute the task. But as your responsibilities become more complex, the differences between an effective leader and a supersized individual's contributor with the leader's title is painfully evident. In the short term, you may have the strength to do all the responsibilities and the duties. However, soon or later, you realize that you cannot do this by yourself. You need to recruit the people so who can help carry out your visions and callings. The kingdom of Israel grew into a small empire under the Solomon's leadership. Now he needed new ways of organizing through the delegation. The amazing thing is that Solomon does not try to prove his leadership by himself, he began to invite others to lead Israel together. From the beginning of David's rule to the end of the Solomon's reign, there were lots of new titles for royal officials. This shows that the time have changed. It is not the surprise that Solomon, when Israel was at the height of its power and needed a big government administration. Solomon understood how to delegate authority to capable leaders and how to navigate his nation's government. Shall we listen about the Solomon's wisdom in his leadership through medita meditating on today's passage? First Kings chapter 4 verses 1 through 19 So King Solomon ruled over all Israel, and these were his chief officials, Azariah son of Zadok the priest, Elihoreph and Ahiah sons of Shisha, secretaries, Jehoshaphat son of Ahilud, recorder, Benaiah son of Jehoiada, commander-in-chief, Zadok and Abiathar, priests, Azariah, son of Nathan, in charge of the district governors, Zebud, son of Nathan, a priest and advisor to the king, Ahishar, palace administrator, Edoniram, son of Abda, in charge of forced labor. Solomon had 12 district governors over all Israel who supplied provisions for the king and the royal household. Each one had to provide supplies for one month in the year. These are their names. Ben-Hur, in the hill country of Ephraim. Ben-Dekar, in Makaz, Sha'albim, Beth Shemesh, and Elon Bethnan. Ben-Hezed, in Aruboth, Soko and all the land of Hefer were his. Ben Abinadab, in Napoth Dor, he was married to Tapoth, daughter of Solomon. Bayana, son of Ahilud, in Teanach and Megiddo, and in all of Beshean, next to Zarthena below Jezreel, from Bethshean to Abel Mehola across to Jokmeam. Ben Giber in Ramoth Gilead, the settlements of Jair, son of Manasseh in Gilead, were his, as well as the region of Argob in Bashan and its sixty large walled cities with bronze gate bars. Ahinadab, son of Edo in Mahanaim. Ahimaz in Naphtali, he had married Bashmoth, daughter of Solomon. Bahana, son of Hushai, in Asher and in Aloth. Jehoshaphat, son of Parua, in Issachar. Shimei, son of Ela, in Benjamin. Giber, son of Uri, in Gilead. The country of Sihon, king of the Amorites, and the country of Og, 
king of Bashan. He was the only governor over the district. This chapter ties closely with the previous chapter, just as the story of the mother contending over one baby was a great example of a Solomon's great wisdom. The, the wise way he selected, trained, and empowers and supervised the national leaders is obviously proven by the, his great leadership. Solomon was a leader of the leaders. And then now, why the leaders does it all themselves? And then Solomon knows how to delegate his responsibilities and authorities and then get the job done. Solomon shows that he is a wise leader by the carefully choosing different people to help him rule the Israel. Compared to his father's leadership, Solomon did not choose his leaders from the military background. Priests, advisors, military leaders, Secretaries and other officers are all chosen to play important roles because everyone, everyone is important for upholding the nation's welfare and ensuring its security. Solomon's government was structured much like that of a modern nations. He had officials who served as ministers or department secretaries over their specific areas of responsibility. In the list of his leadership, there are, there are some interesting names that you can find. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Eliud, in the verse 3, Jehoshaphat had served under David in the second Samuel chapter 8, verse 16. King Solomon asked him to con continue his role as a recorder. In this way, he was a more of the setter of the rules than uh, historians of the past. He was almost as important as Secretary of the State. King Solomon wanted to learn from the past how to effectively lead his people in a new direction. He learned from the past mistakes to improve today's matters. In verse 4, Solomon recruited Jedob and Abiathar. If you turn to the first king, chapter 2, verse 26, you can find Abiathar had been spared his life because of he attempt to appoint Adonai as the next king instead of Solomon. Although Abiathar made a great mistake, Solomon forgave him and delegated him as a priest again. Solomon could not take away the, his title or uh, disunity as the inner priest because of uh, what he has done was uh, great in the past. From verses 7 to 16, Solomon chose uh, 12 governors over the, all of the Israel. These uh, 12 men were responsible for the taxations in their individual districts. The districts were not strictly separated by the tribal uh, borders, but open according to the mountains, lands, and the region. And Solomon's leadership was uh, creative. He can imagine that in the past, 12 governors would be uh, appointed strictly along uh, tribal lines. And Solomon knew that uh, previous way of doing were not necessarily the best ways for the present time. He was willing to try new things. Also, he, uh, each one made a previous uh, provisions for the one month of the year. Texas were paid in the grain and the livestock, which were used to support the real court and the central government. Its government, uh, governors were responsible for one month of the year. It shows that Solomon's leadership was not oppressive. The one twelfth of the inner work is not too much, so each of these governors did not feel overwhelmed by the burden of raising taxes. As a wise king, Solomon does not try to control the everything himself, but strategically appointed a great leaders and then delegates 
responsibilities and duties. By distributing responsibilities among the trusted individuals, Solomon not only extended his reach but his empowerment uh, over the others. As a servant of God, we should remember the importance of working together in partnership on the delegated work that God has given us. Let's bow down. So, Father, let us remember that you did not call us to be the superstar. And, you know, Father, when you are giving us a vision and calling, you expect that, you know, we work as a community. And, you know, Father, let us know how we can say yes to the things what we can do and a no to the things of what we cannot do. And then let us a humbleness of how we can stretch our hands, you know, to invite others, you know, to jump into the visions which you gave us, Lord. And I, Father, thank you that you call us to be the community, the body of a Christ, according to our own, uh, our gifts and talents which you grant us. Let us know how we can harmonizing and working together to extend the kingdom of God. Thank you for the people you brought us in our life. In Jesus' name, we prayed together. Amen.